Hello, my name is Mark Gingrass. In this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you've already installed R and R Studio. This particular series of tutorials is going to cater to those that have somewhat of a smidgen of programming experience already. So I will go slightly faster than I would if you've never programmed in your life. That being said, you don't have to have actually had programming experience to follow along, but a little bit of math knowledge or just some logic will get you through. That being said, once you open up your R Studio after installing the software, you're going to come up with a screen that looks just like this. And you have a console area which is on the left hand side and you have a blinking cursor with a little greater than symbol. That's where you're going to input your actual code. And then on the right hand side at the top, typically you'll have your environment. My environment is empty. I'm not storing anything. And that's where you store your variables. If I declared a variable x equal to 5, it'll be stored in my global environments list. And on the bottom right, we have a bunch of different tabs. And it's usually on the package or files tab by default. And what you have here is also plots. So you'll find various things down here in the bottom right that we'll use throughout the tutorials. That being said, let's jump right to it. This little console right here, we're going to type in some basic calculations like 2 plus 4, that equals 6. We all know that. Now that little line, that little number with the 1 in it, that's, that's saying, hey, line 1 of your output is equal to 6, basically. And, and uh, this will do more complex math, like 2 times 3 plus 8. And it does, obviously, do the math order of operations. You can do exponents. 2 to the 4th, you can also do trig functions like pi divided by 2, and it's in radians by default. You can do um, things like floor, and you can do 3.4, and it should give you back 3. So basic math operations come straight out of the box as expected. Now we don't really want to work in the console window because the console window is kind of like your stove. You put it on the stove, it's going to start cooking. We want more of a recipe and that recipe is what we're going to call an R script. So we store recipes in filing cabinets or in a recipe book, we write it down and we don't actually cook anything until we actually take the ingredients and put them on the stove. So that being said, let's learn how to create our first R script. We want to go to file, new file, R script. When we create the script, it's called untitled one by default. And you don't have to save it at this point, but it's obviously good practice to save as you go. Now, scripts offer the simplest form of repeatable analysis in R. They're just like text files that contain code and comments, and the extension is dot capital R. So your brand new script is completely empty. The first few things you want to put in any R script to be uh, to have good programming practice is to put comments in it, and you can put comments in like. This is my first program. And now you a comment is that little pound symbol, the hashtag. And anything to the right of that hashtag will not be executed when you run the script. Now, on the left-hand side, you see the uh, line numbers. And you all obviously, you might have a different theme than I have. I have a dark theme with purple. If you want to change that, let's go ahead and go to View. I'm sorry, let's go to Tools, Global Options. And then you'll see Appearance down here. And what I'm going to do to make this um, easier to record is I'm going to increase the font size to something more manageable for, for you all to see on the screen. And then you'll see all kinds of different editor themes. And as you go through them, you can see there's different themes. Now for recording this video, I think I'm going to switch it to something a little bit lighter. Um, let's just go with TextMate default. And we'll go with that. Now you can pick whatever theme you like. Wow, I am not used to bright like that. Anyways, line five, we're going to do something simple just like we did with the console. We're going to do two plus two. We're going to hit the enter button and you'll notice nothing happens. If you notice down at the very bottom, we do have a console still there. You see the console tab and a few other tabs. You can actually change this as well to, uh, to view more or less of the console. 
what we want to do is we want to execute this within our script. What we can do on a Mac is you can hold Command and hit the return key and you'll see it appear down here at the console. And whenever I use the word command, it's usually anal analogous with control. So control enter if you're on a PC with Windows. Okay, but two plus two doesn't do anything but print to the console the number four. What if we wanna assign that to a variable? Let's assign that to a variable x. x, and you will see this notation I have here, the less than symbol, then a little dash. That is saying, hey, assign what's on the right-hand side of this to the left-hand side. So the evaluated two plus two, which is equal to four, is going to be assigned to x, but not yet, because I didn't hit command return on it yet. Now, I just did. You see in my global environments, x on the left and four on the right. It is in my global environment. So now, wherever I choose to within this project area, even in the console, if I type in x, it's going to appear the number four. And up here, if I hit the x again and I actually run it, it's going to be equal to four as well. So let's pretend that this is our entire script and it's gonna do something magnificent. We're gonna save the world with this script. We wanna save it. So let's go to save and we'll just pick a spot. I'm gonna do save as, and I'm gonna save it in um, just on my uh, desktop is fine for now. I'm gonna call it test program. You can call it whatever you choose. You'll see that it changed to test program.r, that R extension. Now to run this entire script, I'm literally just gonna hit this little run button here. And you can see there's a little uh, command return here. That also works, but if I click on run, it'll just run that line. So it does, it's, it's assigning x is assigned to two plus two. If I hit run and hit run again, it's gonna just print x. See how that works? But if I actually highlighted both, it'll do both. So let's, let's change that so I can prove it to you. So let's make that a five. Right now, I do not execute line five. Notice this, if I hit command return on line six, it still shows four. Also, if I hit this run button, on line six, it still shows four. But now if I highlight the whole thing, or even the entire program, because as I said, lines one, two, and three are commented out, they will not execute. Now if I click run, it'll run all of the lines that are highlighted, and you'll see the number seven show up in my console, just like that. And you can do things like y is equal to, I'm sorry, y is assigned to x plus four. So we have x, we would think that it's equal to seven because that's what X is in our global environment here. Take that seven, add four to it, and assign it to Y. I'm gonna do Command Enter for the most part when I'm showing you the examples. Now you have Y and X in our environment. Now these two variables, X and Y, they remain in memory. So that means it's in your RAM. It's very easily accessible. We can reuse these objects until we close R. So this will get you started on your very first R script. After the script, I'm going to show you how to do Markdown, which is even more awesome than an R script. So this is your taste of what an R script is. An R script is good for very simple analyses, maybe some simple basic things. But now if you want to actually publish this into a journal or share it with colleagues or have some really good documentation with like an introduction, you want a methods of use, methods of analysis, you want to put a conclusion in there, et cetera, et cetera. You want to be able to reproduce these results and explain it to anybody. Well, an R script isn't necessarily the best method for that. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do an R markdown file. And I think you're going to really appreciate the power of R markdowns and R notebooks. I hope this video was useful, and if it was, leave a comment below, let me know how, and also subscribe. That'll help me grow my channel and continue creating videos like this.